I'm not a financial advisor. Video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research. Rocket Lab primarily develops and provides rocket launch systems for space projects. They provide launch services and spacecraft components. The current flagship launch vehicle is the Electron, which is a reusable small launch vehicle which has had 21 launches to date and deployed 105 satellites successfully. For those that are interested, this is a very small launch vehicle when compared with SpaceX's Falcon 9 which boasts a height of 70 meters compared to the Electron's height of 18 meters. The Electron can take 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit versus the Falcon 9 which can take 22,800 kilograms. The Falcon 9 is also able to take a payload further than just a low Earth orbit. On the subject of launch vehicles, Rocket Lab has ambitions to develop the Neutron which would be a larger vehicle that would be more competitive with SpaceX. We will go into detail on the Neutron later. In terms of spacecraft, Rocket Lab has developed the Photon. This is described as a flight-proven, reliable, flexible and affordable spacecraft. It's capable of missions to low Earth orbit, as well as planetary destinations. Rocket Lab also generates revenue through satellite hardware, such as star trackers, as well as reaction wheels, boasting a 20-year track record. Rocket Lab boasts a far greater number of successful launches than its competitors, such as Astra and Virgin Orbit, a spin-off of Virgin Galactic which specialises in the launching of satellites. As previously mentioned, the Electron has had 21 launches to date and deployed 105 satellites. This places Rocket Lab as a leader in this new emerging industry, with unrivalled launch availability at 132 launch slots every year, which is more than all US sites combined. It's important to note that the Electron has had three failed launches. The first flight of the Electron took place in 2017 and failed mid-flight due to a software failure on the ground rather than due to the rocket itself. The second failure was flight number 13 in 2020, which was down to a single fault in an electrical connection. The last of the three failures occurred in 2021 due to an early engine shutdown. The rocket was able to be successfully ocean landed for the second time in history thanks to booster recovery. Although three failures sounds bad, this is normal. SpaceX has also had three failures, showing it's only natural to have failures and setbacks in this complex industry. The current operations undertaken by the Electron have included a variety of high-profile customers, including NASA, the US Air Force, the Royal Australian Air Force, Space Flight Incorporated, Canon Electronics, as well as the National Reconnaissance Office, which operates the reconnaissance satellites of the US government, and the US Space Force, which is a branch of the US Armed Forces, among others. Reusability is also one of the most important factors when it comes to gaining a competitive advantage. The Electron is reusable, and the Neutron will also be reusable. This is a key factor in bringing down the costs of space launches down dramatically, which brings in customers wishing to achieve their goal for a lower cost than previously possible. The Neutron rocket, as seen in the thumbnail and on screen, is a larger launch vehicle that Rocket Lab are developing to be the successor to the Electron. The design for the Neutron is not final, so it may not look like the concept shown. Whilst the Neutron is not planned to be as big as SpaceX rockets such as the Falcon 9, the successful development of the Neutron, which lives up to expectations, would be a great advancement for the company and play a huge role in growth. The Neutron would be able to carry a payload of up to 8,000 kilograms or 8 metric tons to low Earth orbit compared to the 300 kilograms of the Electron. The Neutron is planned to be 40 meters in length compared to 18 meters for the Electron. Of course, this bigger capacity would allow the Neutron to be used for projects which the Electron is not suitable for and open up Rocket Lab to a wider range of customers. The planned completion of the project is in 2024 and would be a momentous achievement for Rocket Lab so that they can better compete with SpaceX.
whilst the Neutron may perhaps be the most exciting prospect for Rocket Lab at the moment. Rocket Lab is diversified and vertically integrated, so it's not solely reliant upon space launches. For example, they noticed a lack of supply of, of small satellites relative to demand, and are hoping to fulfil this demand through their own best-in-class components. Rocket Lab recently improved their reaction wheel production through a new production line, which can create 2,000 reaction wheels per year to help meet this demand. Also, while space systems may only account for a relatively small amount of revenue currently, Rocket Lab clearly has plans to scale this up, as seen in projected revenue figures published back in March. Given the current restrictions in New Zealand, it's important to note that Rocket Lab has two launch sites, one on Wallops Island, USA, and the first in the Mahia, New Zealand. The first half 2021 earnings call for Rocket Lab took place on the 8th of September and provided an insight into the thinking of the CEO and CFO of Rocket Lab, as well as providing us with some much needed numbers. The SPAC merger agreement between Rocket Lab and Vector Acquisition provided $777 million in gross proceeds. Whilst of course this is needed to develop the Neutron, it was noted that this cash was sufficient for these means and that Rocket Lab would be open to further acquisitions or mergers if the opportunity was correct. These acquisitions aim to provide new technologies and more efficient competition for Rocket Lab. It can also be seen that research and development costs increased by 156% year on year to 15.6 million US dollars. Despite difficulties with COVID restrictions in New Zealand, which we will talk about later, Rocket Lab has been able to build a backlog of launch contracts and will hopefully have the capacity to complete these launches by the end of 2022. Another positive is that gross margins have become positive at 13% relative to a negative 67% this time last year. Rocket Lab also announced a five launch deal with Kinesis to launch IoT or Internet of Things satellites for the firm. Although it's to be expected, it's important to remember that Rocket Lab is making a loss through its current operations. Rocket Lab reported a net loss of $32,547,361 in the first half of 2021. Given the early stages of this industry and high R&D costs of $15.6 million, this is not surprising. Adjusted EBITDA also decreased year on year to negative $18.1 million. Despite these large losses, I would say no one realistically expects such a company to make a profit and positive gross margins is a good step towards profitability. The lockdown restrictions in New Zealand is negatively impacting revenue as launches have been unable to take place. With this in mind, quarter three revenue is expected to be just four to five million US dollars compared to full year expected revenue of 50 to 54 million US dollars. New Zealand shutdown is estimated to have reduced revenue by approximately 10 to 15 million US dollars. Furthermore, Quarter 3 gross margins are forecast at minus 221% due to this COVID-19 shutdown. With Rocket Lab currently having a market cap of around $9 billion US dollars, this suggests a forward price to revenue of around 173 or around 138 if we remove the impact of these COVID-19 restrictions. Taking a look at the expected revenue in 2027 from the March presentation, we can say that the forward price to revenue using 2027 expected data is around 5.73. Importantly, as with any estimate, conditions may change and these estimates could be entirely wrong. This shows that you are paying a significant premium for the stock which has the potential to be hugely profitable, perhaps in a decade. Whilst understanding the operations of Rocket Lab is important, it's also equally important to understand the path and possibility for profitability. Therefore, I would urge any investor to read and analyse the earnings report themselves before making any investment decisions. The future of Rocket Lab seems to be bright, but of course, as you estimate figures far into the future, such as in 2027, it's likely that these will become increasingly inaccurate due to modelling assumptions. In terms of some closer future estimations, these can be said to be somewhat conservative 
due to the unpredictability of COVID-19 restrictions in New Zealand. The backlog of contracts, including a new five-year deal, as well as the increased production capacity for reaction wheels and increased research and development spending, all show that the firm has the potential to continue growing exponentially to become a dominant player in this fast growing and interesting sector. Whilst the Electron is already the second most frequently launched US rocket, the Neutron is a fascinating prospect that could bring in multiple times the revenue with its increased payload capacity, especially considering the existing relationships and contracts with big customers such as NASA. Similarly to SpaceX, Rocket Lab rockets are reusable and this comes with a far lower lo launch cost. Rocket Lab provides another option for firms and organisations who wouldn't want to launch with SpaceX in this industry with growing demand. As it's becoming more and more essential to launch satellites and other classified payloads, future contracts with firms, militaries and organisations could be worth billions. The vertical integration of Rocket Lab also may allow the firm to capitalise on the growing industry through providing satellite components as well as spacecraft and launch vehicles. Rocket Lab is truly an interesting but likely risky investment opportunity given its current valuation. Thanks for watching this short overview of Rocket Lab. This has been the largest project I've undertaken on this channel to date, so please do leave a like and a comment if you found it helpful.